Hi, welcome to the Digital Supply Chain course. This is lecture number one, where you will learn about the supply network alignment reference model. And we will do it with a very practical set of applications in a warehousing operation. The supply network alignment reference model was developed by me in the year 2014 to help us all see the key supply chain strategic knowledge areas. It starts with the building blocks. The first building blocks is named planning logistics. The planning logistics block includes demand planning and forecasting, purchase and procurement planning, stock and inventory planning, and production planning. The second building block is named synchronous operations, and that includes the knowledge areas of transportation, warehousing operations, manufacturing execution, distribution, the management of reverse channels, and international logistics. The third building block is known as stacked integration, and it includes six key knowledge areas. Customer service or customer logistics, specialized information technology knowledge such as WMS or TMS, sustainability within the supply chain management, supply chain projects, expert human resources, and strategic sourcing. Very close to that, you will find the supply chain governance block, including supply chain risk management, supply chain business intelligence, and a few other key knowledge areas to each business. Then we need to look a little further the supply chain processes and understand the relationship with the other departments. And finally, this NAR model will illustrate the external supply chain elements, including your logistics service providers, your customers, suppliers, non-competitors firms, and even your competitors. I'll use this NAR model to illustrate the impact of digital transformation in a warehousing operation. So, one possible approach is using the concept of deep learning to help face recognition. You can still use deep learning for vehicle recognition. You can use machine learning for product assignment within the positions in your warehouse. It will work closely updating the parameters of your WMS. You can also use machine learning to optimize your picking operations and gain productivity. And use Internet of Things, IoT, to connect vehicles, equipment, goods, and people. This will enable to review layout, improve process, improve productivity, reduce accidents. There are a large number of applications even connecting to deep learning, machine learning, and blockchain. You'll be able to see how 3D printing may increase the speed of replenishment processes within a warehouse. You may avoid disruption of goods. We'll see how virtual reality applications will help you to improve and manage projects within the warehouse. We will learn also how to use private blockchains to manage internal data. You will learn how to use federated blockchain to manage external data within clients, haulers, customers, and consumers. We'll go through the concept of smart contracts and you'll understand how trading terms will be managed in the context of blockchain. Well, apparently it is a warehouse focused type of solution. But in fact, if you see all the possible correlations, there are many other areas that would be impacted by these solutions we've just been very quickly through. And that includes demand planning, forecasting, stock and inventory management, customer services, supply chain projects, strategic sourcing, not only the warehousing operations, but also transportation, distribution, even the management of reverse channels. 
you will need to review the way you deal with your logistics service providers, customers, suppliers, and that would definitely impact areas such as engineering, research and development, human resource, not to mention sales and finance. How different tech solutions and different mindsets will impact each of these supply chain knowledge areas. This is what we will see during this course. We've been through some tech solutions that may impact warehousing operations. And you've learned about the supply network alignment reference model. In lecture number two, we'll go through the concepts of industrial revolutions, how they have affected supply chain management, and you understand the concept of cyber physical systems. This case, Tesco Home Plus in South Korea, is presented in lecture three and in lecture six. Both lectures are part of section one in the course. So we have this section one, introduction, and I present the concept of cyber physical systems in lecture three, and I discuss the omnichannel effect in lecture six. After we, we have this presentation, if you want to go back there, you will recap the content. And what we do in these global meetings is uh, digging deeper in the business case. Maybe I will have presented that in one minute, two minutes, five minutes, because of the time constraint of the video. And here we have time to go a little deeper, okay? What was the business context? Uh, Tesco is a major British retailer, maybe the biggest. When they entered in the South Korea, the brand was renamed to Home Plus. So Emart is the biggest competitor, Home Plus is the challenger, all right? Uh, Home Plus very soon grew to hack number two in the, in the local market, but faced an obstacle. Uh, a fewer number of stores than Emart. All right, and therefore the, the, the question to be answered is how to, to become number one without increasing the number of stores because there was a physical limitation to open new stores. From the perspective of DT, DT is a digital transformation, okay? From the perspective of the digital transformation journey, one must deliver a unique value proposition. And this value proposition must be able to fulfill, to respond to uh, eventual unmet customer needs. So what to offer to the Korean consumers? They researched the market and they found that the Koreans are the second most hardworking people in the world. And they do hate grocery shopping, they think that's a waste of time. So what, what was the idea? to let the store come to people. Instead of people going to stores, let's make the store come to people. So they created virtual stores in subway stations, especially those uh, stations related to uh, where people go to work. And these displays are exactly the same as actual stores, uh, but the consumers will buy using their smartphones. There is a QR code, the QR code, you go there with a smartphone and, and it will read. So it's possible to scan uh, the QR code with the phone and therefore the product will go to your online um, shopping cart. These products will be delivered after you get home. And here we have a few uh, mechanisms we're going to discuss. Uh, we, we have a section to introduce uh, machine learning, how machine learning predictive models work and how they get matured. And imagine that 
you, you have the information about your consumer, you know where he is, where she is, because you have the, the app in the mobile. And not only that, even in the days they are not shopping, you're monitoring them. So you're generating data. So imagine that I am Alex there and uh, they know my average trip time from this station where I am to buy something to my home. And they know well when he buys something there in approximately uh, 45, 46 minutes, he'll be at home. And they will plan themselves to deliver after you get home. So an hour after or a couple of hours after you get home. Once you've, buy, you've bought this, it's delivered to the consumers at their home just after they, they get there. People will be able to use this transit time from work to home to shop and then uh, save time afterwards, okay? Fine, this is the idea. A few results. Uh, online sale increased as more than 10,000 new consumers joined the ecosystem. The number of new registered members uh, in the Fidelity programs rose by 76%. The online sales increased by 130%. HomePlus obviously became number one in the online market and in the physical stores, they, they became a very close second. How HomePlus designed the value chain. The model used an operation named Pick From Store. Actually, the stocks are in the stores. So if HomePlus had, for example, 15 stores in, in that city, any of them would be the, the fulfillment center for a certain order. Imagine that we are discussing here the challenges of last mile delivery. Therefore, you really have to maintain your inventory closer to the consumer. So you need a decentralized inventory strategy. And they built that by operating a peak from store solution. The fulfillment uh, will be done from the existing products in the stores, even uh, products that are on the shelves. So the ERP, the Enterprise Resource Planning, was adapted to be able to pick products that were actually on the shelves, not only in the back room of the store. This separation process follows in, in, in the back room of the store. You, you may execute the picking activities in the back room or on the shelves, and then it will be consolidated in the back room, and then vehicles are loaded. And while you're scanning the QR codes, the system already offers a delivery window. And how that works, you have predictive models, and you have machine learning based predictive models that will analyze the average time this consumer will take from where he is buying the product, then the train trip to get home, he will need one hour to get home. And then based on the volume that is being processed, based on the allocation of resources that is occurring within the different stores, based on where the product is located, they will also, based on the expected uh, traffic intensity on the roads, they will also predict the average time to move the product from the store to the consumer's house. And automatically, it's not a, a, a parameter set in the system. It's a recommendation, an online made recommendation. It said, okay, this is the item you're buying now. I know where it is stored. I know the traffic conditions. I know your uh, trip time to get home. So. I can deliver it there within this time frame. So everything is connected. Once you go through the, the machine learning application concepts in the course, you will understand really well what is behind this mechanism, okay? Now, we need to map the impact of this type of solution in the supply chain. 
I will use the STAR model, the Supply Network Alignment Reference Model. And the STAR model is the, is the subject of lecture number one. The templates are available for downloading. You, you have the, the STAR model in color, in white, a simplified version, you have different models. Okay. And what can we see in this is in our model? We have areas of knowledge. We'll have planning areas, operational areas, and tactical areas, internal, external, different areas of knowledge in the supply chain. And we use this NAR model to uh, understand where the impact of a specific initiative will occur. Okay? Th this is a slide that is shared in section one, lecture three. In that lecture, I suggested that the following yellow areas were the most impacted by this initiative. Demand planning, forecasting, stock and inventory planning, customer service, IT, uh, strategic sourcing, for example, in this peak from store operation would be very risky if I simply received my purchase in a central warehouse and therefore to replenish the stores. Maybe a few items will require direct delivery from suppliers to stores. So you have a strategic sourcing thing here, obviously transportation to stores, distribution to consumers, and the entire warehouse and operation. That, that sounds pretty much obvious. But what we'll see today is that this impact goes further, okay? At the end of lecture five, I, I suggest a reflection question based on uh, how do you think the cyber physical systems, big data and IoT may change the supply chain management in these scenario areas. So this is what I will share with you now. Very quickly, uh, a few questions that we may raise. What is the impact? on the fulfillment structure and then we need to think about the logistics service providers inventory customer service warehousing how to reshape the fulfillment structure based on this new operation then what will be the impact of what will be the impact of the use of iot uh, in the entire supply chain and it's important to go back for example to lecture five where we present a few templates to understand what a IoT project is all about. This shopping experience implemented by HomePlus uh, and the use of IoT uh, will have impact in different areas of the organization, including sales, finance, information about visibility. Then we should ask how to plan inventory, where the inventory will be, and what's the quantity? So how to plan its quantity and location? It depends on where the demand will occur and not where people buy, but actually where this shall be delivered and have to think about purchasing inventory management. Then how, how do we forecast that? If we, we have the physical stores demand data, consolidated after one month, and then uh, we'll look at Excel spreadsheets and then project the demand for the following month. Okay, this is a very traditional time series based approach, but there is a different way to deal with that. And we discussed this in section six, for example, using machine learning algorithm to capture the big data to promote a new forecasting approach, we, we call it uh, a, a predictive uh, approach. So we use machine learning predictive models and this will impact different areas as well. Uh, the new roles for distribution centers, we are not uh, planning one large warehouse and operation um, outside the city center, but eventually small local distribution centers in a few of them to the point that Maybe we'll not even have one distribution center with this function, but we will use the stores as distribution centers. 
uh, can we migrate from cost center to business units? So uh, maybe the entire supply chain operation is not anymore a place where you maintain resources that cost, but it's an initiative that will promote revenue, will diversify the revenue sources. How to see your competitors? We have seen on online shoppings that brands such as Walmart, Target, the brands associated to the French Casino Group, they allow different players to sell through their marketplaces. So eventually one distributor, which is a competitor to the retailer, they will announce a product through the retailer's marketplace. So how are we going to deal with different companies that also sell the same products? Will us allow their products to be announced through our uh, solution? And therefore, what will be the impact on the delivery times, on the demand plan, on warehousing and all that? What are the changes in the demand and supply profile? Uh, what to expect from operational performance? Now I need to think about a different type of fleet. I need to reshape type of vehicles that will attend to these deliveries, uh, where I will locate them, what's the amount, what will be the new performance indicators. So the operational performance will be measured through different metrics, all that will change. Even these small warehousing operations that may occur in the back room of the stores what will be the processes in there? What will be the activities holding there? The size, the storage equipment. How will I be able to, to keep this product there available, but in a more compact way? There is a redesign in the, in the way we think warehousing layouts. How to define the distribution strategies, how to measure service level, how to monitor the operation, what's the, the mix of vehicles to be used, how to deal with the demand peak period. This type of operation has a very short customer journey time window because they basically buy, do buy when they are leaving and their jobs at the end of the working day. So the demand is highly concentrated. How to manage that? how to be able to cope with the peaks. Um, traditionally, there is a lower peak in the early morning and frequently consumers are buying items to be delivered at their work location. And these are items for their breakfast eventually. So at 7 a.m. they will buy yogurt in the train station using the QR code to be delivered at uh, the job location in 45 minutes. So he will have his breakfast there delivered just in time. So what, what will happen if I delay that for three or four hours? Well, he was expecting this for breakfast or eventually on their way home, they are expecting these items for their dinner. And if it doesn't get there, get there um, the next day, early morning, Value proposition has not been delivered. Finally, are the suppliers ready? We, maybe we are not buying one full truck load every month. Maybe we are receiving a few cases every day and decentralized uh, across different stores. How, how are the, the distribution structure and the pricing structure, the cost structure, uh, from the supplier's perspective to uh, respond to this new format. So when we put all these questions together, we see that mapping the impact in the supply chain of one very simple initiative, and we're not talking about technology. Technology is not the issue here. It's not about a NASA technology, it's QR code. We all do have this in our smartphone, so the interface is very simple. Uh, obviously, in the back room, um, there will be some machine learning algorithms working, very strong computational process power, 
a solid knowledge on how to transform the incoming order into a routing strategy, into a picking strategy, uh, order assembly, uh, shipping, delivery strategy. It's a very concentrated high peak type of operation. And obviously there is a, a required expertise behind that. But uh, what we can see is that even the relatively simple initiative will touch the digital behavior of the consumer. Therefore, we have a digital transformation because we are transforming the way we deal with the consumer from the perspective of the digital behavior. So this digital transformation initiative will require a complete, comprehensive and deep review of the supply chain processes, both from planning logistics, synchronous operations, uh, performance indicators, therefore the tactical um, integration, the relationship with different departments, and this is a, a very uh, complete type of impact. So that's pretty much the, the idea of this presentation. I hope you, you have enjoyed this session will be uploaded in the course area. Okay, thank you.